It is not inspiring, not my favorite, and I'm like, work, mama. I always want to drive them, but I can't. Girl, what? This is so good. Hello, my beautiful light bright. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crayon in the box. Y'all, if you're new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I have been heard that some people have been desubscribing from me, and I'm like, girl, why? So, do me a favor and make sure to check if you are indeed still subscribed. With that aside, let's get into it. It has been a minute since I've gotten in drag and started to talk to you about Drag Race. So it is time to play my favorite game. That is right, we are playing Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race France Season 3, Episode 1, and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous and which ones are drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Girl, we got a new season of Drag Race. We got Drag Race France, which honestly is kind of one of my favorite international seasons. So I'm really excited that we are getting started, especially since we're having like a lukewarm All-Stars 9. <gasps> I know, controversial opinion, right? But we got 10 new queens and we got a lot to talk about. We are gonna be talking about their entrance looks and of course we are gonna be talking about their runway looks. So buckle up, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer episode and I am so excited. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First, we're going to be looking at their entrance looks. And I like the entrance looks because this is our first taste of who these queens are. This is not a challenge, so they can really give their own personality onto it. So, I'm always excited to see how these queens want to introduce themselves. So, first up, we have Misty Phoenix. And Misty Phoenix is coming out in these black pants with this black thong detailing. She's got this black top with this black headdress. On top of it, she's paired it with this tall ponytail. And she's definitely giving you that, like, biker girl gang. I think this is a really interesting look. Now, I do not know the queens, so I am going by what they're showing. But comparative to what she gave us on her promo look, which I did a video on that. And if you haven't, go ahead and watch that one as well. She is giving you something completely different. And this is what really surprised me. Because I first got introduced to her through the promo. And then she's coming out with this, which is a little bit more hard edge, a little bit more hardcore and I'm loving this side of her it is really giving you that sort of that duality on top of it she's giving you sex but like in the good way because it is not super provocative but it is just provocative enough that it makes you just like tingle a little bit you know what I mean now the only thing that kind of threw me off is actually the nails she went with green nails and I was a little bit confused because there's no green on her I wish had she done the green nails she would have done a green ponytail to really match something together I think that would have been my only little adjustment had I given anything but is this a bad look no, it's not. It's actually a pretty good look. It's also a pretty strong start, especially since the entrance look isn't even rated. All in all, it is good enough to get a fuck. Next up, it's Le Philippe, and Le Philippe is coming out in this like sort of teal turquoise bodysuit that is a glittering all over. And she's paired it with blonde hair, this white boa, and these open-toed shoes. Now she goes on to say that she is actually the comedy queen of the season, and this actually surprised me because usually comedy queens come out with more like campier fashion, and I thought this was a pretty good outfit. I didn't necessarily get comedy or camp from it. I actually got good fashion but then again we are talking about drag race france and drag race france has always been one of those seasons that has really good fashion so even if you are a comedy queen apparently this is the caliber that you should be striving for now let's get into the outfit the first thing i will say is that i was immediately thrown off by the fact that you can see her boy nipples and that really bothered me now i'm not saying that every queen needs to be wearing a breastplate i'm not wearing a breastplate right now you can totally get away with it but with such a low cut top like that, I think boobies would have really made the difference. And if you really weren't going to do boobies, at least do like a bra or something to give you a little bit of shape. I feel like it is just a little bit too open and I really, really hate seeing boy nipples. It's one of my pet peeves. But the rest of the look has this like a little bit of an old school a glamour to it, which I kind of appreciate. Hence the fur and the blonde hair. I feel like those really work well together. The part that 
what then throws me off is the pairing of the shoe. Now, I don't mind that she went with a white shoe, but if she was gonna go with a white shoe, I think it should have definitely been a closed shoe, maybe just like a classic stiletto, just to give you more of that classic old school vibe. That being said, I think I actually would have preferred it even better had this been all in turquoise with the same fabric and just elongated her leg to really make it feel like all one connection. And then we get to her face. Her face is beautiful. We can say that she knows how to paint and I'm not gonna like criticize her on that. The part that I am a little bit iffy on is the white eyebrows. I feel like there's not enough dark in her eyes. I think she should have done either like a bigger eyelash or just done some darker eyebrows. And I think that would have just taken it up a notch. All in all, there it's not a bad look but obviously there are some things that I probably would have changed. Nevertheless, it is still good enough to get a soft bow. Next up is Aphrodite Amour, and Aphrodite Amour is coming out in this sort of like purple violet two-piece suit with this fan and this blonde hair. She goes on to say that she has been doing drag for one year. And I'm like, girl, I am jealous. First of all, I did not look like that when I was doing drag for one year. But more importantly, she got on Drag Race France. If you've been getting on Drag Race when you've been only doing drag for one year, I first just have to applaud you. But let's get into this garment. And I think to myself, you can tell that she's been doing drag for one year. <clears throat> I say this not because the outfit is bad. Actually, you can see that she probably spent some decent money on it. It looks well constructed and well put together. The only thing that's throwing me off is the grandmother or mother vibes of this whole thing. I'm like, this is definitely not giving you personality. It is definitely not giving you a vibe. It is definitely not giving you youthful. But she's not trying to do that like old lady thing like someone like Sarah Jean does, who is like a young person trying to do old. This just feels like she's falling into this old category because she doesn't know what she's doing. I just think that it really could have taken it up a notch. She then goes and f uh, pulls out this fan and this fan is just like a regular sized fan. Girl, when do we ever use a regular size fan? First of all, we usually use the drag fans, which are like double the size, but this is an entrance look. If you're gonna pull out a fan, it should be even three times the size. Like make it a moment, make it a thing. This just feels teeny weeny in her manly hands. All in all, it is not inspiring, not my favorite, and therefore definitely gonna be a trap. <laughs> Next up, it's Perseo, and Perseo is coming out with this blue glittery top, this blue headdress, this blue skirt, and the tallest blue heels I have ever seen. When I saw her on the promo look, I said, ooh, this bitch is giving a very Gran Canaria uh, drag, and then she comes out with this, and I'm like, this makes sense, she's giving the same Gran Canaria drag, and then we find out that she is indeed from Gran Canaria, and I was like, this all makes sense. So for those of you who do not know, drag does differ from country to country, for example, in France, they are really known for chic elegance and very fashion, while in Gran Canaria, they are known for these tall heels and no wigs, We're usually wearing headdresses and almost wearing like almost no clothing. The reason for this is it's just their style of drag, but also because it's so hot there that you really can't wear that many clothes. Now, she comes out in this and I immediately recognized it. As she's walking, I'm like, okay. It's got sparkles, it's got movement, she rips off the, but then she rips off the dress and I'm like, okay, I'm liking it a little bit less because it is a little bit too exposed. And then as she gets to the runway, she rips off another piece and it's even more exposed. So it went from something that I kind of like to something I kind of didn't like. So I'm like left confused on whether this is a good outfit or not. Another thing about the Grand Canaria drag is, is that we've seen Grand Canarian drag queens on Drag Race España and some of them that are so excellent. I'm talking about someone like Drag Sethlas. So she has a high bar to compete with. And the thing is, this doesn't necessarily compete. Is it bad? No. I am glad that it is getting a new audience in France because not everybody watches Spain or knows Spanish drag. So I like that it's getting a new platform, but I'm just wondering if she is the one to give it. All in all, because it went from kind of cool look to a kind of nothing look, like literally she's wearing nothing. I definitely don't think that this is draggy enough for me, and therefore I am gonna go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out in this 
what looks like a giant snowball. She's got this fur jacket, she's all covered up, and you just see the hair. And already I'm like, this is a good bitch, just because that hair is amazing. It is so perfectly and quaffed. As she walks down the runway, she opens up her snowball thing, and a giant gown comes on with just a little bit of snow on the shoulders, plain into her winter name. And I'm like, work mama now this is good drag and she knows it too so she was wearing this a giant purple dress which is like inch to her waist you can see that she got a tailor to make this and a good one at that even the little snow on her shoulders is not just regular snow it's a little bit of ostrich feather with a little bit of rhinestones and honestly this thing looks expensive this is the type of drag i came to drag race france for this is what i'm expecting and i'm loving every minute of it this is definitely going to be a fun. Next up, we have Norma Belle, and Norma Belle is coming out with this red skirt, this blue tops with this yellow sunshine moments on it. She comes out and she said that she's coming from La Réunion, which is a French island nation. And I'm like, work, these people are really bringing in different types of drag. But Norma Belle is the one that surprised me one of the most because when I did a review on her promo look, spoiler alert, it was one of my least favorites. So I was not really expecting much from her. But when she came out with this, I didn't even recognize her. She looks 20 years younger and she is definitely giving you that like cool girl vibe. Now the outfit itself isn't like all that va 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 voom, but when you look at it and you realize it is actually the flag of La Réunion and I think that is so smart. You're coming in, giving your culture, you're giving in your vibe and you are serving hot, hot, hot. All in all, I think that she definitely got the point across of an entrance look, which is give us your personality in three seconds and this definitely did that. It makes me want to know more about her. It makes me intrigued. And for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and give her a bow. Next up, we have a Magnetica, and Magnetica is coming out in this like orange puffy jacket with this orange puffy shirt, with this orange puffy boots, with this orange puffy purse that's also a dog and this big orange hair and these orange eyes and she is looking creepy as no but in all the best ways to be honest i love this michelin man look i think that it is definitely conceptual it is definitely cool but it's giving it to you in a very oddball way and you know i love an oddball queen after seeing her promo look i was excited to see what she was going to come back with and i was not expecting this because this is a completely different silhouette than she gave in the promo look and i was like work mama work i feel like this is giving a lot of anime vibes with the coiffed hair and the big eyes but it's also giving you fashion because like this puffy jacket glove combo thing can look really cheap if you've done wrong but this looks very expensive so therefore you know she did it right all in all i really have no comments for this because i've never seen anything like this and i love seeing new things it is for all of those reasons that i'm gonna go ahead and give her a bow. Next up, we have a Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail is coming out in this leopard jacket with this leopard hat and this red coiffed hair. As she walks down the runway, she opens her jacket to reveal this little skimpy leopard dress with all of her fur showing. This look is very like vintage-esque. It's giving me a little bit of that Barbara Streisand feel, so I'm definitely getting her vibe. I like that she is more of like this pinup vintage queen, but the part that threw me off is that she didn't shave her chest and this one was like was like huh now i sometimes don't shave my chest so i'm okay with people not shaving their chest let me be very clear about it i just don't know that it works with this specific look at one point one of the queens yells out gender fuck and i'm like but is it though? Because she is a very traditionally beautiful queen. So it is kind of like, why is she doing the hairy chest? And that's the part where I'm like, eh. it doesn't feel like she's embracing it or making it a moment. It just feels like she has a hairy chest. I think if she didn't want to shave, this could have looked really good with a breastplate on and it could have covered it all up. If she did do it on purpose, I don't get why it's on purpose. Like I said, I don't mind if you do it, but you got to give me a rhyme or reason. And this one just didn't make a lot Lot of sense to me but that is just my opinion but let's get into this look the look is quite good it is giving what it wants to be giving you understand who she is is it the best look no 
but it is good. And because it is good, it is good enough to get a soft bow. Next up, we have Edna Noir, and she is coming out in this like black leather rain jacket with this black hair, and it looks like she is crying. As she walks down the runway, she rips off her jacket to reveal that she is in this black bodysuit with all of these sort of uh, diamonds all over it, which kind of makes it look like raindrops, and she starts to cry. And I think this is a really cute camp way to make an introduction. I think that she's also playing on her Noir name. And no, we are not related. Though I definitely want to meet this bitch because, well, I mean, we could be family. But on that, uh, she comes out wearing this black suit with these diamonds on it that look like raindrops. And immediately my mind went to Dragis Belgique where they had a rain themed runway. And I was like, oh, this is what they were trying to do. I think that this is far more successful than what some of the other queens did. And honestly, it is not a complicated look. It is just a simple look that is just done very well. She took a concept and she ran with it. She got it from the makeup to the hair to the jacket to all of the little crystals. I think that this is one smart bitch and I can't wait to see what she has to hold. All in all, it is definitely going to be a wow. Next up, it's Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out in sort of these little witch attire, but like not an ordinary witch, but like a witch from like the 1950s or something like that. It's really giving me a little bit of that bewitched fantasy. Now, at one point, one of the queens yells, come on Cam, referring to Cam Hugh, who was on previous season of Drag Race, who also did a witch look. So I was like, ah, oh, smart. I thought that was really cute, but definitely saw the resemblance there. But the one thing that I do like about it is that the witch vibes is something that Lulu Straga has been saying throughout her season. We got a little bit of that witchy vibes in her promo look and now we're getting it again. So it is a consistent message and I love a consistent message and branding. Now she is giving you all of these colors all over the place. That is giving you a little bit of that scarecrow vibes, you know, but like scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz mixed with a witch. And then we got this masterpiece. And I do say masterpiece because I think this is very well done. This could look really cheap if done improperly, but it doesn't. And that's what I really appreciate. You can see that she thought about it. You can see the cut fits well. You can see that it is all put together and it definitely takes a specific eye to do this. I don't know how long she's been doing drag, but she is doing good drag. All in all, I'm kind of loving this and that is why she's getting a pop. And now we move on to the runway where the theme is made in France, where the queens must give us a look inspired by an item that was made in France. So first up, it's Le Philippe, and Le Philippe is coming out in this baby blue Rococo style uh, dress. She's got all of the gold detailing all across the body and the skirt, and she's paired it with this tall white hair. And if you look very closely, you notice that there is a little guillotine at the top to kind of go off with her head. This is definitely giving you Mary Antoinette vibes. And here's the thing that I have. This is so predictable. Uh, we have seen Mary Antoinette done so many times. I am almost getting annoyed about the amount of times that we're seeing Mary Antoinette done. That being said, every time we see Mary Antoinette done, it is done so well and it looks so good. So that's why I'm also really annoyed because I always want to drab them, but I can't because they look like this. You can see all of the details into it. You can see how well it fits her. You can see everything about it and it is definitely going to be a wow. Next up, it's Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out as cinema. She's coming out in this white dress with these little strips coming down to it that is supposed to allude to the film strips. She's then carrying film strips, and then she's also got film strips in her hair. First, let's start about the hair. The hair is super cool. It's got this movement to it, and all of the film strips in it look really put together. Then we move down to the dress, and I'm like, Ooh, I love this idea. I love about this idea of going with a film, but the dress is just lacking. It just feels like a white dress with two stripes on them. I wish she would have done more with the films themselves, maybe wrapped it around her, maybe made the whole dress out of film itself. I think that would have been really cool. But the way it is right now, it is very basic. And this is surprising considering what she showed us before. All in all, this is not my favorite and definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> 
next up is Aphrodite Amour, and Aphrodite Amour is coming out as Clementines. She said that they grow in the country, so therefore she is coming out in this garment. Now, I was shocked by this garment because Aphrodite Amour has always given me some of the worst looks, but then she comes out with this one. I was a little bit shocked with this outfit because this one came out of total left field. First of all, I didn't immediately think of France and the Clementine. I didn't expect this from Aphrodite. Aphrodite, on her promo look, I gave her a drab. On her entrance look, I gave her a drab. And even though we didn't rate the challenge looks, it was questionable at best. So I was fully coming into this being like, what is this bitch going to give us? And then she comes out with this and I'm like, girl, what? This is so good. I love the camp factor of it, but it's also done in this sort of elegant way. The texture that's in the garment is super, super cool. All in all, I think this is very well done and even more well done knowing that it's coming from her. The only thing that I would have changed if it was me is the hair. I find that the hair has nothing to do with the garment. I wish she would have done it maybe like a stem, you know, to go with the little stem of the orange. Or if she didn't want to do it to go in that campy look, if she just did like some orange hair just to really pull down the look this hair just feels a little bit like big blonde and random to me does this hair look good on her yes does it give her right proportions yes but I just don't think that it works with this specific outfit, in my opinion all in all the only thing I'm criticizing is her hair so therefore she is definitely gonna get a bump. Next up, it's Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail is doing a pen. She is coming out in this half white, half blue look with this gradient going down her body. She's got this like plastic jacket over her because she said that the pen that she is going for is like a crystal pen, and she's topped it with this big blue hair that's giving you a little bit of Marge Simpson, but it's actually supposed to be the pen cap. And I'm thinking to myself, this is super cute and so original. I would have never thought about going in this direction. If you went in this direction, sometimes you could have went a little bit too camp and a little bit too cheesy with it, but she didn't. She did keep the fashion into it, which I think is really smart. As she walks down the runway, she lifts off her hair to reveal the top of the pen cap and that her hair is actually the cap itself. And I was like, oh my God, that is such a little cute detail. That would have been such a gaggy reveal had she done that in a bar or in a club. So the idea is awesome. It's got a lot of cute details. When you actually look at the garment itself, it's a little bit plain to me. It is just like a simple jumpsuit that is faded. I wish there was a little bit more to it, but it does give the impact that it needs to on stage and it is a cool creative concept. So for all of those reasons, it is still going to get a pop. Next up, it's Misty Phoenix. And Misty Phoenix is coming out in this like half pink, half deconstructed outfit. She's got this pink collar, this pink waistband with these big hips and this white flowing fabric. She's paired it with this tall hair and she's got little champagne flutes on her boobies. She said that she is in fact channeling champagne, especially the champagne flute, specifically the traditional coupes. Rumor is that they were modeled after the breasts of some famous woman. Now, now, I like that somebody went champagne. Champagne is very French, so I was like, okay, cute. But did this read champagne to me? No. If you didn't tell me this was champagne, there was a 0% chance I would be knowing it. Of course, she's got the two little glasses, but that's the only thing. She starts to like describe her thinking in the outfit, and honestly, I'm not getting any of it. Personally, I think champagne is a good idea, but had she done it, I think this needs a little bit of an overhaul. First up, the color. The color, I think, should have definitely been in that like dark green color to replicate the champagne glass, or do it in a gold champagne. That could have also done. The pink was a little bit out of nowhere. She said that the, the the cups were modeled after the breasts, which I think is a cute idea, but I felt like they really needed to stick on and then come off to really give you a little bit of a moment. Now she is just holding them and kind of just like mimicking this idea. Then her hair, although super beautiful, has nothing to do with it. You could have made that look like a champagne bottle, for example. And then the skirt, instead of the flowing fabric, maybe she could have had like little bubbles or little or little something come onto it, or maybe even had champagne glasses around it. It just feels unfinished. It just doesn't feel thought through. And even though it's an okay garment, it does not fit the theme. And because it does not fit the theme, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Magnetica, and Magnetica is coming out as 
perfume. She said that she is the perfume bottle. She's coming out in this a pink ensemble with this blue hair that has this giant like egg thing on top of it, which is supposed to represent the little like poop poop little pusher thing that sprays out the perfume. Now her body is shaped in a perfume bottle with the exaggerated hips. I think perfume is yet another really great example of what to do in this runway. And I think that the way Magnetica did it is super smart because you definitely understood it. It definitely looks unique and it definitely looks a little bit avant-garde. Now, when you start to stare at it, you realize that there's actually not that much going on and I wish there was a little bit more, but from an initial reaction and just looking at it on the runway, when when I first saw it, I was like, ooh, love it. And then as I started to look at it more and more, I realized that some of the details were missing and that's kind of where I was just like, mm. That being said, this is a runway moment and a moment she gave us. And because of that reason, she's definitely getting a ah! Next up, it's Perseo. And Perseo is coming out in this dress that is made up of what looks like cards and this giant headpiece. She goes on to explain that these are not in fact cards, but they are in fact braille. Now here's where I'm like a little bit iffy about it because I initially thought they were playing cards and I was like, did the French invent playing cards? But uh, she said, no, that they are braille and that's why she did that. And braille is a really unique concept. So I love that she went in this direction. The thing about Perseo is Perseo doesn't wear a lot of clothes. So the little items that she is wearing need to be perfect. And when I look at these, they aren't perfect. One of the things about Braille specifically is that it is tactile. It's got little bumps up and down and she's made this out of like fur. I wish it had little bumps. I wish there was a little bit more texture into it. I think that would have looked really cool. On top of it, she's paired it with this headpiece and she's doing this headpiece because she doesn't wear hair and she does headpieces, which I'm totally fine with, but this headpiece just doesn't match with the uh, outfit itself. I wish had she done this, she maybe would have done like an open book to kind of give you an idea of what she is actually talking about for those laymen like me. And then she's got her giant heels, which were kind of becoming her signature. But again, I wish she would have brought that braille into it, perhaps maybe made it look like she was walking on top of stacks of books. I think that would have been really cute and camp. It didn't do any of that. And because it didn't do any of that, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up is Norma Bell, and Norma Bell is coming out in this black little dress with this black hairdo and this giant flower on her. Initially, I have no idea what she's supposed to be, but she goes on to explain that she is in fact vanilla because vanilla comes from La Réunion and therefore was brought to France from there. And I thought, smart because she's now tapping into her culture into her brand she did that on her entrance she was talking about la réunion now she's on her runway and she's also talking about la réunion so it is a consistent message which is called branding on top of it she's giving us a completely different look she is coming out in this very like a vintage old school glamour and glamour she is giving you. Yes, she's got this big flower on her, but the flower doesn't overtake her. You can still see her beauty and you definitely get the vibe she was going for. All in all, she looks exquisite and therefore getting a ah! Next up is Idea Noir, and Idea is coming out in this a black and white look. She's painted her whole face white. She's got black makeup, she's got a black dress, and is definitely giving you vintage vibes. She goes on to explain that her concept is, in fact, a black and white movie, and it all makes sense. First, I'm gonna say I love that she painted herself white. It shows her commitment to the idea, and it really helps tell that story. But then we get into the garment and that's where you lose me a little bit. The garment does look like it comes from a costume shop. I know that she is doing like vintage movies so she wants to uh, channel like a vintage style but this is drag at the end of the day. So I wish she would have switched it up a little bit. I'm okay with the back fabric. I just wish there was a little bit more sexiness to it, a little bit more uh, personality in it. I don't wanna see a recreation of a look. I wanna see your interpretation of that look. And that's where I'm like, losing it a little bit because you can see she spent money on it, but I'm just like, it's not telling me anything about her and it doesn't feel modern. As she walks down the runway, she opens her stomach to show you the insides, which I guess are supposed to be like her guts to maybe play on this horror movie theme. I don't actually know. This is just me interpreting what's happening. And that's sort of the problem. If I have to kind of like guess what's going on, 
then you're probably not doing a good job. All in all, it wasn't my favorite and it's gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out with a full production. She comes out and she's got these two posters that then get tear away and you see her coming out. She's coming out in this white dress that has got paint on her. As she walks down the runway, she pulls out a paint gun and paints some red on her. So now she is both red, white, and blue, the colors of the French flag. She then turns around and it's got her message on the back. She is in fact liberty leading the people and she is coming as a crusade and on top of it as if that wasn't enough she goes on to explain that the paint gun itself was invented by the french and i was like work this is a whole production and i love it you can definitely see that this was probably made for a big stage for a performance you can see how this would be so so cool but then she brought it to drag race france because she's like you know what i'm gonna make a statement and i'm gonna bring in all of the props i don't know how she got them there i don't know what the limits are on their luggages but girl work on top of it i love that the fact that the dress changes the next time she's gonna wear it she's probably gonna paint more on it so it's really gonna be like this transformative really like an art piece which that's what drag is art and on top of it the dress is really well made i've seen people do sort of like painting on dresses but they usually do like this really basic white dress because honestly you're probably gonna have to throw it out after a couple of uh, uses but no she decided to do all of the details and the dress on its own looked really great all in all i'm loving every minute of this and it is definitely going to be a ah! And that is it for the first episode of Drag Race Films. Now, I didn't do the challenge looks because I never do the challenge looks, but I will say that the challenge looks in this episode were so good. They were even better than some of the runways and I was really debated to do it. So if you haven't watched the episode, I would recommend you do it because girl, they were exceptional. But all in all, I think this was a really strong start for Drag Race France. But are we surprised? Drag Race France is like one of the best international seasons, in my opinion. It's still delivering even on season three. They are really raising the bar and I am so excited to see what the season holds for us. Now, based on the viewership of this video, I might be doing the whole season, but that's still to be determined. So if you do like this video, make sure to comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you want me to do the full season. I am reading all the comments and replying to to most of them but enough about that and uh, let's get into the reason why you guys are here you guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week well my drab of the week for the entrance look goes to Aphrodite Amo. honestly it just wasn't giving actually it was giving grandma so that is why she got my drab of the week my drab of the week this week for the runway look goes to Oh. I, got. I was so disappointed by this because this queen on her entrance look and on her promo look were so good so i was expecting big things and this was such a letdown it really felt like an unfinished garment but enough about the negative let's get into the positive so who had my fab of the week well my fab of the week this week for the entrance look goes to magnetica i really love this i actually even like leona winters i gave them both five stars but ultimately i like my drag to be a little bit kooky a little bit more original and therefore that's why i ended up going with magnetica because i've never seen anything like it and i think that is amazing and for the runway look my fab of the week this week goes to leona winter i love this because it was a full performance the gown itself looked good but also it had a message it had art it was a whole stage production and i love a queen who brings it up to the next level now people are going to start thinking what do i need to do to stand out and that is always a fantastic way to be y'all that is it for this episode do you agree or disagree with my opinions do you want to see me do more of these do you have any comments well let me know in the comments below and while you're there go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button once again my name is neon noir at miss neon noir on all social platforms and i'll see you in one of my next videos Bye bye